Okay, let's take a look at the femur. This is probably one of the most notable bones of the spine, uh, the big giant Fred Flintstone type bone. The proximal and distal aspect, no worries, that's easy to take care of. I find the big giant round head of the femur, so I know that must be proximal. When I get to the distal end, I have my femoral condyles, and so of course I know that that has to articulate with the tibial condyles. Okay. When I look at my anterior and posterior, what you'll find is the diaphysis or shaft of the femur is typically going to bow to the anterior aspect. But probably one of the better giveaways is if I look at the proximal epiphysis, I'll see a, a, a supralateral bump and I'll see an inframedial bump, but they're a little bit maybe hidden uh, in, in this particular view. When I flip it over and I take a look at the posterior view of the tibia, what you'll see now is I can find my big superior, my smaller inferior that are connected by this bony ridge. I also notice on the posterior aspect of the diaphysis, I have this giant raised ridge that we refer to as the linea aspera. So now I must be looking at a posterior view of the femur. If this is a posterior view and the femoral head has to go into the acetabulum, I must be looking at a right femur. Okay, now we'll take a closer look at some of the features. We come and look at the proximal epiphysis of the femur. Right off the bat, I find the femoral head. And then within that femoral head, I have a real small depression that we call the fovea capitis. And that's a nutrient foramen for vessels to keep the, the, uh, the proximal epiphysis alive. Just inferior to the head, as you would expect, you have the femoral neck. The femoral neck is the most commonly uh, fractured bone when somebody says that they broke a hip. Rarely do they break a pelvis without some major trauma. A fractured hip is usually a broken femoral neck. Then I have a big giant knob on the superolateral aspect. That's called my greater trochanter. And then I have a smaller, more inframedial knob. That's called my lesser trochanter. Between them, I have on this plastic mod, you have to hallucinate it a little bit, but you have what's referred to as an intertrochanteric line. On the posterior aspect, if we flip it around, again, I find my greater trochanter, my lesser trochanter, and now I have a more prominent, what we would call intertrochanteric crest. When somebody feels their hip and they're out looking, you know, kind of palpating at the side and find that bony prominence, the greater trochanter is actually what it is that they're palpating. From a nursing standpoint, this is going to be a, a spot on patients. You're going to palpate frequently when you try to get a hand along where you're going to give the injection into the gluteus medius. So that's everything in a proximal epiphysis. Femoral head, fovea capitis, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, intertrochanteric line, and the intertrochanteric crest. Okay? Be sure to call them trochanters. They aren't tubercles. They aren't tuberosities. They are trochanters. When I go to the distal, epiphysis. On the medial aspect, I have my medial condyle, I've got my lateral condyle, and then just sitting above on either side, above my medial condyle, I have my medial epicondyle, right, because epi means upon or on top of. Here's my lateral condyle sitting right on top of that. I've got that little bump that I would refer to as my lateral epicondyle. Now on the femur, on the medial aspect, we have another bump. We have our medial epicondyle, and then we have a smaller one up top. That bump is referred to as the adductor tubercle. The thigh has a group of large muscles that sit on the medial aspect of the thigh that cause adduction at the hip, and this is a common point for them to insert. Remember, the more stress you place in the bone, the more the bone is going to remodel to, to reinforce that stress. That's Wolf's Law. So we've got medial condyle, lateral condyle, lateral epicondyle, medial epicondyle, and adductor tubercle. The patellar surface is just that flat part there that's going to articulate with the medial and lateral facets of the patella. Okay? The popliteal surface, or popliteal, depending where you put your syllable, that's on the posterior aspect of the distal epiphysis, and that is in that popliteal fossa that we looked at way back in week one. And then once again, that raised ridge that runs the entire length of the posterior femoral diaphysis. We call that the linea aspera. And there's your femur.